Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman and I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and today I'm coming at you with a video about the number one reason for false positives in your GPR data. Okay, the number one reason for false positives, right? The source, the number one source for false positives that you're going to encounter in your GPR data. So where do false positives come from? What is a false positive? False positive is something that is in your profile, right? Your GPR profile, you're surveying along, you're collecting data, and your profile looks, right, as if it's a, a, um, a two-dimensional view of the subsurface, right? Vertical down view into it. A false positive is something that shows up in that data that's not really there. When you look at a GPR profile, then time that it takes for your wave to, you know, to go down and bounce off something and come back gets converted to depth. So when you look at something in that profile, it appears as if it's buried below the surface. Doesn't always happen, okay? It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you get signals, right? You get responses in your profile that appear to be objects that are buried below the surface, but they're not there, all right? So what's the source, right? What's the source? Well, the number one reason for false positives in data, in GPR data, are something called airwaves, okay? Airwaves. What airwaves are, are when you're going along and your signal is spreading, it's spreading along the ground surface, okay? It's spreading into the air. And your electromagnetic radio wave can bounce off of something that's on the ground surface, come back to your GPR antenna, get recorded with two-way travel time and amplitude, but it's not technically buried below the surface. However, since your GPR is collecting things in time, when it gets plotted, it appears as though you identified something that's buried. And so here what we have today is an example. We have a building, <clears throat> this is pretty typical for things like uh, utility locating, okay? You have a building here, right? Commercial building. You have a parking lot, okay? In the parking lot, let's say that there's a, an island, right? So people are gonna park here, 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 you know, all around this island, all right? You know, you come up into this driveway and you might go in and park. So this is a pretty typical scenario. Simplified for sure, but pretty typical nonetheless. And here's what would happen or what can happen. You have your GPR. Right? It's going to spread out a signal right, into the subsurface. It's really going, though, out uh, along the ground surface as well. And you push this cart this way to see if you can locate utilities right, that are running in this direction. Okay? So let's say that those are two utilities or pipes that are running in this direction, and you're going to try to hit them all right, uh, perpendicular so you can identify them as hyperbolas in the subsurface. What happens is, as you're moving along this direction, okay, you get a bounce off of the signal, okay, off of this tree as well, okay? So it bounces off the tree. What does that look like in your GPR profile? Oh, I'll take a different color here. How about brown? So let's say this is the start of your transect, right, and this is gonna be your profile into the subsurface. Okay, what does it look like? Right, what does it look like? Well, as you pass the tree, you're gonna get a hyperbola. Because as you're approaching it, it's gonna take less and less time for that air wave to bounce off the tree and come back to your GPR. And you will literally get a hyperbola that appears to be a pipe or a utility or something else that's buried below the surface. So you'll get a hyperbola as you move towards the tree. Right? As you continue to pass over your two pipes, what are you going to get? Hyperbola. Hyperbola. Now, as you approach the building itself, what's happening? Airwaves coming out, bouncing off and coming back. You get closer, bounces off, comes back. You get closer, bounces off, and comes back. And what this will look like in your profile is almost a half a hyperbola. Because as you get closer to the building, it's taking less and less time for that wave to bounce off the front of that building and come back to your antenna. And literally what you'll get 
is something that looks like this off to the side of your profile, okay? <clears throat> it may be a little bit deeper than this, but nonetheless, you'll get almost of a half a hyperbola, kind of what, what it's going to look like, off to the side of your profile. This is what you need to be aware of. This is what you need to be careful of. This is what you need to be careful of. If you're coming along the side, okay, so let's say you do another transect and now you're coming along the side, right? You want to hit these pipes again. You're coming along the side going this way. When you approach this, you're going to get a half hyperbola and it's going to flatten out as you're moving parallel to this building, right? Because it'll be equidistant, 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 okay? And you'll continue to get a flatness and if you go to the past the building on the other side, you get the rest of those tails coming off. And so the question is, is that something buried? Is it geological? You know, is it a tank that you're coming over on, on top of it? You need to be aware of what's going on around you. And so airwaves can considerably uh, uh, um, cluster up your data, make it difficult to interpret. But there are ways to get around this and check. And obviously the number one way to check is to do hyperbola matching. So if you do a hyperbola match, right, on these, and it says that the dielectric, you know, um, because it's some soil, you know, it's coming up at, I don't know, let's say a uh, uh, dielectric of 16, right, so K equals 16. When you check this one, you can check this to see if it's an airwave. If you start getting a K, right, equal to, you know, 1 to 2, which is the dielectric of air, be very, very careful not to interpret this as being uh, um, a pipe or utility or some other target, okay? So this can certainly be uh, uh, um, a problem. But this is how you do it. You fit a hyperbola onto it, and if your dielectric comes out at, you know, between one and two, then you know you have an air wave, and so you should be very careful of this. Number one source for false positives in your GPR data. Check as many times as you need to. Check, I was sitting with some, uh, um, Consulting clients of mine the other day, we were doing a, uh, um, a four-hour um, training session on data processing software, which, by the way, if, if you need help with your data processing, reach out to me, type an email, happy to help you. But we were going through this, and they had something that looked just like this. And they were wondering if it was a buried pipe or not. And what it was was they were inside a warehouse, and there were columns holding up the ceiling. But every time they passed a column, right, so like the tree, every time they passed a column, it would have... A hyperbola. And so what I did was I matched it up and we saw that the dielectric was very low, one to two, and so we knew that it was it was an air wave. I was on a project recently where uh, um, we had some, some uh, 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 field techs and it was locating graves and we were outside of the cemetery and as we're going past the fence, every time we passed the fence post, we got an air wave hyperbola, okay, and one of these. And so one of the field techs said, look, we located all of the graves outside the cemetery. And in reality, we didn't locate any of them, right? But you can get tricked very easily, especially in that case where graves are generally buried pretty systematically next to each other. These were one meter apart every single time. And so, uh, uh, but once we, you know, I pointed out to him that we're passing fence posts every meter, he recognized that those were obviously airwaves spreading across the ground hitting the fence post, coming back, uh, um, and so we're able to right, remove those from, from the data set, or at, at least remove those from our interpretation as being possible graves. So be careful of this. Airwaves are very important to understand. Number one reason for false positives, number one source for false positives in your data. Be aware of what's going on around you. Understand how the signal spreads and understand how signal responses will create different, you know, will, will be contingent on different velocities and understand how those work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you liked the video, click the like button and uh, please share it around. Subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to build the channel, you know, subscriptions up, trying to create great content like this, helpful, useful uh, ideas and concepts to bring to the GPR community. So please subscribe to our channel and go over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in and you will get our training videos into your inbox every single week. And you'll also get our free introductory training video. It's a 40-minute uh, uh, training course. So um, go ahead and pop over there, learngpr.com, put your name in. So hope all is well. I will see you guys on the next video.